Creating an electronic design can be a lot like building a house. You've got your components, windows go there, that's where the door should be. The HVAC system will cool everything just fine, and yes, those hardwood floors are going to do nicely. Most of the time, we are concerned about where our components are placed, how our signals are going to be routed, and how you're going to cool the thing. But do we ever consider the materials themselves? Does the contractor ever think about the composition of the concrete? Well, here on Chalk Talk, we talk about components a fair amount. We talk about software quite a bit. But the materials themselves? That's not something we cover very much. Until today, that is. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, we're diving headfirst into the world of materialism with Patrick Kalbermatten from Kemet. Patrick and I investigate material classification, the role of ferrite in our systems, the development of metal composite and piezo ceramic powders, and how we can all leverage sustainable material science. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Kemet. Hi, Patrick. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello, Amelia. I'm so happy to be here also. Thank you very much for the invitation. Okay, the title here says A New Perspective on Materialism. Now, Patrick, I thought we were here to talk about electronics. So how philosophical are we about to get? I think it must be from my past uh, when I was liking all these strange things happening in philosophy. So let's see what's happening with materialism. What is materialism? It describes the physical matter as the fundamental reality and that all things and processes are results or manifestation of matter. Is it clear? Maybe not. So let's try to make it a bit more visual. Let's take the example of an apple. An apple, what is important is not that it's red or green, that it's young or ripe, or that it's big or small. What makes that an apple is an apple is its substance or its essence. And it's the same with our products that we do at Kemet. Our product's essence is material. At our core, we are obsessed with leveraging sustainable material progress in science, and we have cool people to do that and they will create the products that the customers need. Okay, now that I'm understanding a bit about materialism, how does this relate to Kemet? Let's continue with a bit of semantics. What is Kemet? Kemet has been founded now, wow, 100 years ago, and I'm really proud to show you the initial logo of Kemet, but uh, more importantly, it means chemical metallurgical. And our location in Japan is uh, called Tokin, means tohoku kinzoku, and as you certainly understand, it means metals from the north. And maybe recently you've seen also that there has been some uh, noise about our METCOM inductors. Oh yes, I've heard about this. Tell me about METCOM. METCOM is a metal composite powder that we created where we have a very good characteristic of low loss, so it was to go away from amorphous. This was due to the fact that our customers at that time, they wanted to have a good material for low voltage, high current. In fact, they wanted to increase their current value. So we created this for such kind of, let's say, older type of applications. That doesn't really look like new technology. That's correct. But it was the starting point. The first fact was that we wanted to go away from ferrite type of material in the inductors. Why is that? In fact, you have higher switching frequencies coming up, so you need low loss at high frequency. And at the same time, you want to save power and use lower voltage. So you need a peak current at low voltage. And so the big issue is the saturation inductance. Can we get into some more detail on that? Sure. So let's make it visual. You see here, if you use a ferrite type of material, after a certain current, you will have a very heavy drop off. Whereas if you use our metal composite material, this drop-off will not exist anymore. You don't have this saturation inductance problem anymore. Cool. Cool is the word. Because many customers then came to us and said, hey, this is really good, but I would need even a longer battery lifetime or I need to get smaller. So we had to develop further materials to fulfill this kind of low core loss requirements 
or hypermobility demand. So what did you guys do in response to all of those requests? So we went away from just having one powder and made a second powder that would be more specialized into high permeability type of applications. We're talking about a lot of powders now. Can you explain some of the differences? Sure. So our first powder is specified for low load drive. It has a very good core loss performance. That means it's all about having longer battery lifetime. The other powder is on the opposite way. It's you have a high load drive, you need a low DCR for that. So it's all about solving the thermal issues that you would have in your application. Oh yeah, temperature is super important. Oh yes, it's so important that we made even a very special powder that with high heat type of powder. And that's perfect to be used for applications where you need to go up 255 degrees. It's all about reliability. It's all about durability. In short, it's all about ACQ 200 automotive type of requirements. So there's a lot of different possibilities we've been talking about. Can we look at an overview of how you've addressed these different customer requests and requirements? Sure. So we have a set of different products in Doctors that uh, we started with the simple powder at the beginning. And you see uh, first was to expand on the current size. And then with the newer powder, we were trying to reach also higher inductances and get automotive. You see that in the fringes, we have also ferrite material because with the metal composite, you cannot go in the extremes. So we still need to have also ferrite type of inductors. Wait, I thought you said we were replacing ferrite. Why are we talking about ferrite again? Well, in fact, ferrite is really interesting because there's a lot of other things happening with ferrite. Let me get a bit more in details about ferrite. By the way, we develop and produce our own ferrite material. And maybe the most important characteristic there is its magnetic permeability. What is magnetic permeability? It's all about the ability to support a magnetic field development. So our trend was to have a material that would go in higher and higher permeabilities. What does it mean? It's all about having a performance improvement or make it smaller. Okay, I think I'm getting it. Can I see what this actually looks like? You have a very good idea. Let's make it a bit more visual. We talk about that much of making it smaller with keeping the performance or even having a better performance. Right. That's pretty important for miniaturization. I absolutely agree to what you say. So you can see here, the industry standard is about maybe 12,000 mu, somewhere around there. And uh, we were going further. Like we discussed, it's all about downsizing. Quantity reduction means less pieces on the board. And the products we use for that is the line filters, or also called chokes or coils. And we use it also for EMI cores. Where? It's all about white goods, consumer goods, lighting, but also industrial. Or in fact, let's make it simple. Whenever you need to plug it into the wall in AC, you will need one of these guys. So we've got that high permeability and we're done, right? Almost. In fact, we want to drive further in our excellency of the material. And the next target or the next challenge is to have the same performance in higher temperatures. So we develop currently such type of materials that allow us to reach soon the same level as the industry standard, but with higher temperatures available. So it's all about having higher reliability products that we can use in even further high requiring demands in industrial environments, inverters, and also in automotive, where you have a lot of electrification happening. So that sounds like you've got a lot going on in terms of products. Right. So here you can see some kind of overview or cheat sheet of what we have. And you see, we have a really complete portfolio addressing demands in low current up to large current, up to 60 amps. And here I talk just about what we have as standard products. By the way, everything is available on stock on Mauser. And we address here conductive emission type of problem with our AC line filters. But we have also the same with DC line filters, where Maybe the portfolio is less big, but still a lot of demand existing. And also everything is stocked and quickly available on Mauser. 
That's a good portfolio for conductive noise. But what about for radiated noise? I think you read in my mind because it's exactly what I have in my next slide where we address low frequency, middle frequency problems with our EMI cores. And if it needs to go in higher frequencies, we have a wild card called flex suppressor. But that's a story for another time. What other characteristics are important here? You are absolutely right. It's not just about magnetic resistance. It's also about the inductance. And the inductance is somehow the opposite of what we discussed up until now. In fact, the inductance is going to protect the magnetic flux or even make it better. And for that, it's important that the loss of the ferrite material is not large because otherwise uh, the magnetic flux will not flow clearly. So it's all about having a high B, low loss characteristic of the material. So we developed also here different type of powders to go into that direction. And you see the industry standard here is the blue line where you have a very good performance at uh, 100 degrees. But if this is used for charging, are we going to charge it at 100 degrees? we need to develop another material that would have not just a very good low loss performance, but that this performance would be stable through all the temperature range. And where do we use that? You gave some kind of spoiler alert because exactly it's used for charging. So ferrite ties for wireless power transfer, for example, where do you use? Automotive is, of course, the first type of application you would think of. But let's try to be a bit more imaginary and think of the future. So how about we charge forklifts or robots in the industrial environment that we have the drones being charged or that we charge bigger white goods? I think there's a lot of possibilities here. All right, that's it with ferrite, right? We're done? Almost. In fact, we discovered also that this same type of material is going to be very effective also for application that needs to go into higher frequencies. So we, here also we developed further powders that would have a very good performance in high switching frequencies and it's used with our power inductors. Where do you use that? It's all about big data transfer, so server storage and of course 5G with the base stations coming up soon. But really... Now are we done with ferrite? Yes, absolutely. Because now we go for something completely different. It's piezoceramics. Right. This is the thing where mechanical energy is giving the output or the other way around. You're absolutely right. Yes. And in fact, there is a classification of materials that is going to drive to different type of materials. So let's have a look on that. The basic one is, of course, the dielectric. Now, inside the dielectric, if you have an absence of a center of symmetry in the crystal structure, it will be piezoelectric. If the piezoelectric material can generate an electric charge when there is heat, it's going to be pyroelectric. And inside of that group, if there is a possibility of spontaneous polarization that is reversible, it will be ferroelectric. Okay, so your piezoelectric is ferroelectric? That's correct. So all the material we are going to discuss further is going to be ferroelectric type. Now, we have two types of materials. One is soft material, the other is hard material. It's depending on what or how you are going to use it. Let's talk first about hard material. This is where the mechanical quality is going to be important. So it's all about having high power type of characteristic in the material, and it's going to be used for ultrasonic transducers. Where do you use such kind of transducers? It starts in industrial environment, but can get also down to medical, for example, with ultrasonic scalpel or cutter. And it can be even used for, let's say, a bit more sonar type of products like fish finders. That's interesting. What about the soft material? So here, it's all about the piezoelectric constant, or it's all about the displacement. And for that, we have our multi-layer piezoelectric actuators. Again, this is all mainly used in industrial environment, but also in other segments where it needs to be extremely precise. So medical or scientific measurement. So that's very specialized, almost niche. You're correct, yes. But at the same time, when we are using this material, we discovered that there is some kind of side effect, which is really interesting. It has high sensitivity performance and is very energy saving type of material. So it's somehow very useful for different set of sensors. 
And we do two types of sensors. We do pyroelectric proximity sensors and vibration sensors. Now, where do you use such kind of sensors? There's a multiple set of applications. In fact, it's all about being smart, all about being connected. It's all about IoT. It's all about energy saving in smart connected IoT. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Patrick. And thank you very much. It was a very big pleasure for me to be the tour guide. And I hope to do some new travels with you again. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Kemet. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or check out youtube.com slash eejournal.